Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome, welcome to today's uh, lecture. As we have discussed in the last lecture, we are going to discuss today about flow cytometry. Okay. So, flow cytometry. So, from the name you can understand that there are some flow of liquid right and cyto means cell and metri means measurement. So, cell in suspension or in fluid we are going to measure the some parameters of cell that is why the techniques is called flow cytometry and the instrument we are going to use is flow cytometer. Okay. So, this machine is also very commonly known as FACS fluorescence activated cell sorter but this is not the name of the general name of the machine fax is a name of a company okay the beckton dickinson named it so what actually doing it by this as we have discussed in the last class if i stain a cell with a fluorescence dye that and uh, see under the microscope we can see few cells maybe 100 if you give a lot of time but if you want to measure in population study like how what is happening in 10000 cells or a million cells then manually it is not possible. So, this machine is actually going to help you how many cells are uh, what color and that color depends on what you want to do. So, by this machine what we can do is we can measure the size or we can differentiate a mixture of cells of different size and their complexity and definitely the protein expression if, if we would like to determine any protein that we can use the same immunostaining method by fluorescence labeled antibody and we can measure it. Okay. So, there are three basic components in this machine. One is definitely we have to handle some liquid. So, that is fluidics. Okay. So, that needs a pump which will suck the cell and do the I mean pass the cell through the detector. And second is we just need like any other spectrophotometer or any measurement because we are going to use the light to see the fluorescence and other parameter we need optics. And third component is just to measure and to digitize the information that we are getting is electronics. Okay. So, this is three components are very distinctly doing their own job. So, fluidics, optics and electronics. What is there? The basic unit is, so there is a light source. Okay. So, light is going in the path of the light if there is a cell, suppose this is a nucleus and this light will interact with this cell and there is a detector this is a common what I am saying there is a detector here which will detect the signal and give it. So, cell is going to come here by fluidics optics is doing its job and the detector which is linked with a photomultiplier tube PMT photomultiplier tube which can amplify the signal if you need it and then if this signal will go and electronics part will get the information and digitize the information. Okay. So, this machine actually is completely computer operated, computer operated and so you do not have to do anything with the machine. Machine has very simple uh, uh, button there are only 6 buttons one uh, 3 buttons actually controlling the flow okay, how fast the cell will move. So, there are three one is slow, medium and fast. Another machine another button is run. So, when you are ready you press the run 
it will do its own job. So, when the run is complete third thing is standby it will automatically go to standby, but if you want to do it forcefully like okay, something is wrong or you do not want any more you want to stop the calculation or the measurement you press the standby. And the sixth one is called prime that is normally we do not use just to clean the machine or the pipe. Okay. So, what is there actually? So, let me go step wise. So, if you take suppose this is a tube okay, and there are cells, okay, there are cells. So, if you take blood what is there? Blood is composed of varieties of cells, okay. different size, different you know blood has platelet, blood has RBC, blood has lymphocyte monocytes or macrophage, neutrophil, basophil, eosinophil all we have discussed. So, it has varieties of cell here. Okay. I hope many of you knew or all of you know the bacterial cell counter or the counter counter, the electronic counter what is there. In bacterial counter the idea is very simple. So, you I mean you take bacteria in a tube. So, there are a lot of bacteria here. So, and if you have a capillary here. So, and then you suck the cell. So, what will happen bacterial move from solution through this pipe right and if there is a light source here and what is going to happen is suppose light and there is a photo multiply tube I am taking the simplest way of measurement. What is as soon as one cell will come here there will be a shadow and that shadow will be counted and that is very fast you do not have to count by uh, in uh, hemocytometer and you do not have to pay just put that machine run it. So, each cell will go each shadow will be counted and finally, you can say after certain time or in 1 ml or 1 10 microliter or 100 microliter how many cells are there. So, that is how bacterial counter works it is very I mean this idea if you expand and do lot of good I mean more activity then this facts will come it also you take the tube you have a very thin capillary. Okay. So, there is a suction cell will move through this capillary and move through this capillary this way what happened there is a tank in this tank there are certain fluid okay. this is called sith fluid which is mostly I mean this is a com I mean commercial trade secret it is not known exactly normally the company is supplying it, but it is generally the phosphate buffered saline. So, that cell you have to maintain the osmolarity. So, cell should not uh, lies. Okay. So, from that source what happened there is a pipeline I am not going to I mean detail of this drawing what is happening the I mean up to certain level there is a capillary what you can see and after that inside the machine through which cell will move okay, upward after that within the machine there is a flow of liquid. So, automatically from both side if the liquid flow like this. So, there will be a jet and through this cell will move blank I mean there is no pipe or anything. So, while this cell is going light is coming from this side say so, this case the light is laser. So, light will pass and there is detector that detector will detect what this detector will detect first thing what I will say is it is called forward scattering okay. forward scattering and in short it is called F S C. So, what is happening? So, suppose this is the cell this is nucleus light is coming like this light coming this way. So, now if you see this cell will block some light and this will go if I make it over simple just to uh, uh, make uh, you understand easy way or easier way. So, what I am saying so then this there will be a, so suppose there is a plate here what will happen there will be a shadow okay. shadow is this size right. So, if there is another cell which is say small okay, which is small. So, same cell I mean similar cell, but this is a small cell 
Okay. Same way and if the light come suppose this cell is not there, this cell is there. So, I am drawing parallelly, but it will happen one by one. So, again same source will give the light. What will happen? The shadow size will be smaller than this. So, if there is a detector which can detect the area of shadow, what will happen? And I am going to plot them. I am going to plot according to size. So, what you will see, you won't see the cell. Okay. What you will see, you will see a graphical representation of this. If this is the size and this is arbitrary unit, if this is the size, each cell will pass that capillary, you will get one dot. Suppose the size is increasing this direction. So, what will happen? Suppose there is a big cell, you will get a dot here if there is a small cell you will get a dot here. So, suppose this is the smallest cell and this is the biggest cell. Okay. So, all the cells will be either this size or in between this size. As a result, so if you run 10,000 cells you will get 10,000 dot where the dot will be. So, dot will be like this. Okay. Each cell will go you will see a dot. Okay. So, that means in this region you will get lot of dots. So, this region will be the smallest one, this region will be the biggest one clear. So, forward scattering wise each dot is going to tell you how many cells are big, how many cells are small, how many cells are in the medium size or in between small and big. Same way there is another uh, another parameter we can measure this is called this is called forward side scattering. The light will scatter sidewise, okay? side scattering. What is going to happen if this is the cell, if this is the cell and this is say nucleus, again light will come same direction, same I mean, okay. but what will happen? Some light which is interacting with the cell will go and if there is a particle inside that will deflect. Okay. It will deflect this way variety if there is no particle it will go away and if there is some particle here there are a lot of particle it may be nucleus and it will deflect in different directions. So, all this side wise deflection of the light will be measured or side wise scattered light will be measured. So, which cell will scatter sidewise most if they have more particle inside? If cell does not have more particle, most of the light will go. Okay. So, if you remember the blood, what is there? There are neutrophil. If you remember the neutro if you remember the neutrophil, sorry. If you remember the neutrophil, neutrophil is uh, is complicated nucleus it has lobe like structure right. You see you will see much better picture in book and there are a lot of particle inside and if you remember the mast cell there are a lot of histamine granule inside. So, there are a lot of particle if you see lymphocyte there are very little particle inside right macrophage bigger, but less particle. Okay. So, now if if I see neutrophil, okay, neutrophil is what? Neutrophil is particle wise if I say that this inside is complex, okay, the granularity is much more. So, neutrophil is complex as well as big. Macrophage is not much complex, medium complexity, okay, but big. Lymphocyte lymphocyte is small sorry small should not be here. Lymphocyte is not complex at all and small. So, what is the combination? So, it is not medium complexity complex medium complexity or I can say high complexity medium complexity or low or no complexity. Okay. 
low or no complexity low complexity. So, high complexity is a neutrophil, medium complexity is macrophage, low complexity is lymphocyte. Size they are big, this is big, this is small. Now, if I make a plot according to this, so again I mean I am coming back to this side scattering. So, if I plot, if I plot this and this is the complexity or granularity. Okay. So, this is side scattering. So, side scattering is increasing means complexity is increasing. Complexity is increasing. So, more complex cell, more complex cell is neutrophil. So, neutrophil will come here, macrophage will come here and lymphocyte will come here. So, you will get very three distinct population. Okay. All dot means each cell, normally we call it event. Okay. So, three com different complexity, high complex will be here, medium will be here, low will be here, because it is distributed according to the internal granularity or the complexity. Now, if I draw the same, if I draw the I and one good thing I should mention that this particular machine when one cell is going upward all the parameters are going to be measured, because you would not get this cell, you would not get this cell back. So, if you remember this part what is happening cell will go, cell will go through this liquid from this tank and it will be collected in another tank which is waste tank. Okay. Waste tank means that all cell will be mixed, you cannot get that back, it will be too diluted, you cannot use it that is one disadvantage of this machine. But once it is going, so it will ha it has several source of light and it has a several detector. So, it has a detector for SSC, it has a detector for FSC, I okay. will come some more detector. So, for the timing we have two detectors, so one cell will pass here, SSC will be measured same cell will go here, FSC will be measured. So, size complexity will be measured of the same cell simultaneously. So, data is stored in the computer clear. So, now if we data is already there. So, now if we plot suppose this is size, size means forward scattering and this is the complexity. Complexity means side scattering. So, if I ask the computer to plot this, what is going to happen? I am going to plot this because cell has this. I am not considering the RBC and uh, platelets because you can remove it, platelets are too small. Okay. Because when you measure something your machine has certain limit, it cannot make uh, measure something bigger than a limit and it cannot measure if anything too small than its limit, but in blood cell lymphocyte to neutrophil they can measure very nicely. So, what is going to happen size wise if I distribute what will come first it will it will give a population here. Okay. So, this is what? So, if I see this is less complex smaller in size less complex because this is here complexity is increasing this way and smaller size. Then medium size is what? Medium size is macrophage. So, macrophage will come here and it has a it is little big. So, it is come here and complexity is medium. So, it is slight more complex if you, this is the complexity scale. So, it is slightly more complex than lymphocyte. right? Now, if I go for neutrophil it is bigger not as big I mean too big but it is very close to macrophage, but bigger than macrophage, but highly complex. So, it will be slightly bigger than macro macrophage is here, this is lymphocyte, if it is slightly bigger it will come here, but it is highly complex. So, it will come here okay. 
and there are some in between complexity it will come here. So, that way if you just run the blood cell automatically this machine will distribute according to their complexity and size. So, you do not have to do anything extra you take the particular cell you want to measure suspend it it should be single cell suspension if it is a clump you cannot do that okay. and you can instruct the machine through computer I need count of 10,000 cells or I need count of 1 million cells. Okay. So, that I am not going experimental detail because there is no point you just understand the principle that should be enough for this. So, okay. so this is the distribution plot this is called dot plot. Okay. This is called dot plot, but if I want to plot a histogram plot of this suppose this one this three population 1, 2, 3 what is this? This is suppose this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3. So, this 1, 2, 3 will come 1, 2 and 3 in this plot where only complexity and this is arbitrary unit is uh, measuring. Okay. So, now same plot we can also ask the machine to make a histogram how it will come? It will come like that area is going to give you that area is going to tell you uh, that what this peak are. So, this is again this is same thing this is one that means this is population is neutrophil as uh, uh, lymphocyte this is macrophage and this is neutrophil. So, you can have dot plot you can have histogram plot you can have um, uh, contour plot okay, density plot whatever kind of plot you want you just have to click in the right place in the computer software or the program you do not have to do, but cell will go and all data is stored now it is up to you which way you want to come count. And the another good part of this machine or the software or the program is if you just get this region or select this region by mouse okay, and ask suppose this is 1, 2 and 3, 1, 2 and 3 and ask that give me statistics. It will immediately tell you how many cells are there in the region you selected for 1, how many region how many cells are there in region 2, how many cells are there in region 3. So, you do not have to do anything you just take the cell in a tube fit into it press run it will go automatically everything will be done you just get the data from computer and do it I mean analyze it depending on what you want to do. Okay. But this is not as simple as this definitely you need to calibrate the machine you have to know the software. So, this part is without fluorescence same way same way what we can do is same way what we can do is suppose we have in blood in lymphocyte say in lymphocytes what we have we have a general population of T cell we have B cell right. So, let me consider only this there are many I mean there are NK cell also in T cell also we have T helper cells we have cytotoxic T cell and we know what is their marker T helper cell has what CD 4 not 1 they have many CD 4. Okay. Similarly, cytotoxic T cell has what cytotoxic T cell has CD 8. Okay. What I did not tell you B cell has another kind of marker it is C D 19. So, it is okay. C D 19 is there. So, this is see all are C D 8. So, now the technique we learned before is what immunostaining what we can buy is we can buy anti C D 4 antibody I can buy from market which is labeled with a red fluorescence. Same way I can buy anti C D 8 
antibody which is green labeled. Okay. So, now if I take blood, if I take blood where all the lymphocytes are there or if I can take uh, cells from spleen which is loaded with B cell and T cell not blood say I isolate the spleen and from spleen I isolate the cells. So, that will be loaded with B cell and T cell. Okay. So, all B cell and T cell will be looking same. So, you cannot distinguish what which one is what. Okay. So, it is mixture and there are a lot of other cells also. Okay. All are say you isolate the lymphocyte NK cell is also there. So, now here in this cell mixture if you add this the antibody what will happen? Antibody will go and bind here which is green. So, under microscope or fluorescence microscope what we will see is some some cell you will see green. After that you wash the extra color then you add this one. In the same sample what will happen all the C D 4 cell will be red because if this is the cell if suppose this is the cell what will happen all antibody will go and bind right. All antibody will go and bind on the receptor because this is the antigen and each antibody suppose I am talking this one if antibody is red okay. antibody is red because you purchase red color. So, if you see this cell under microscope cell will be look like this red. Okay. So, some cell will be red, some cell will be green, some cell will be colorless. Clear? Now, you remember this. So, what we have to remember? We have to remember that C D 8 is green, C D C D 8 is green, C D 4 is red. We have to remember that. Okay. So, when I am taking uh, talking about the light source and detector, so what is there? Here also in the laser, there are specific laser which can activate the red fluorescence. Okay. So, and there and cell is here, this is a cell and there is a detector which can detect red fluorescence. Similarly, another light source is there which can activate the green fluorescence. So, cell is there if it is green detector is green. Okay. So, in this case if this is suppose this is the light source this is for red this is the light source which is green and you have cell here. Okay. Cell from where it is coming? It is coming from here. Okay, it is coming from here. Or if I go like this, if I if the cell is moving this way, and the and the light source are here. This is red. This is green detector are here. So, this is green detector, this is red detector. Okay. So, when the green cell will go here, when the green cell will come here, same way we plot. What is the plot? So, we here we will divide this plot here. Here we will divide the plot this way. Anything beyond this line is green. Okay. Anything beyond this line is green and this is colorless. So, when one green cell will come one dot will come here. When red cell will come here, so this will come here. So, any green cell is going to come here all other cell will come here. So, same way you will get lot of dot here for colorless cell and lot of dot here 
for green cell. Same thing we can get, same thing we can get for red. So, when the red cell will go, so cell will go one by one, right. So, one cell will red, then red, red, then some colorless cell will come in between, then some green cell will come. So, it is random. So, when this will pass, one red cell will go, one dot will come in the red, one uh, dot will come in the red zone, and one green cell will come, green one dot will come in the green zone. So, you can see simultaneously. So, we will get lot of red cell here and lot of colorless cell here. So, in that way if you mix the cell and measure it and ask for the statistics you what we can get we can tell how many red cells are here. What is the red cell? What is red cell? Red cell means C D 4 right. So, we can easily tell how many C D 4 cells are there. Same way I can tell how many green cells are there. What is the what is the green what are the green cells? Green cells is C D 8. So, in a population within say 30 seconds to 1 minute we can tell how many what is the percentage because total cell I know. I can tell you how, what is the percentage of C D 4, what is the percentage of C D 8. Okay? That way you can count any kind of blood cells if you know the marker. So, that is actually facts our flow cytometry what we can measure also this way like this. So, red is this total is this or vice versa. Okay, so, this is the flow cytometry and in next uh, lecture or next class whenever we need flow cytometry then you can understand a little more or uh, little better way than what you understand and I will suggest you to go and read the book. Okay because this is you do not have to be master in flow cytometry, but you should understand what is this. Till then see you in the next class.